Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In today's very special holiday episode, not only am I gonna teach you how to edit YouTube thumbnails Mr. Beast style, but thanks to our good friends on the Pixelmator team, we've got some free copies of Pixelmator to give out. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see how you can get a hold of one of those. All right, let's jump right in to editing that thumbnail. When it comes to getting resources for this type of project, everybody's familiar with Google Images. I'm gonna use that for my Mr. Beast photo. Most people are familiar with Unsplash, which I'm gonna use for my background image. What you might not be familiar with is Diffusion B, which is an implementation of stable diffusion. So you can generate AI images directly on your Mac. Diffusion B is totally free, and you can see with just a little bit of prompting, I can get that image of a Christmas present that I'm gonna use for a thumbnail pretty easily. By default, all of these images are pretty low resolution, but if I just come up here to this hamburger menu, I can get the high res version generated and then save image. At this point, you might be wondering, if I can just use stable diffusion to generate high resolution images, why did I bother going to Google Images to get a picture of Mr. Beast? And the answer is because... So yeah, we're gonna stick with Google Images and use Pixelmator's AI instead. Let's start a new document. Our first goal with this blank canvas is to increase the resolution of some of our assets. So we're gonna drag in this Mr. Beast photo and the AI generated photo of a present. With our assets in place, we just come up here and we click ML Super Resolution and we let it increase the resolution of all of our layers. Now that we have some extra pixels to work with, our next goal is to cut out Mr. Beast and then make him look really vibrant, really stand off the page. Pixelmator has great tools to handle both of these, so with the present layer hidden, we're just gonna select the Mr. Beast layer and do Select Subject. Machine Learning AI does its magic, right click and create a mask. And he's cut off the page, it's that simple. You'll notice there's a couple spots that it missed. With the mask layer selected, it's easy to paint in some black just to cover up some of those spots. The next thing I'm noticing is that his shirt is pretty distracting, so I'm going to move him into place for the final composition, and then just grab the healing brush, and with one click, this big distracting logo is out of the way. Now at this point, our more astute viewers will have noticed that my original photo of Mr. Beast cuts off the top of his head. So I'm gonna spend way too long using the clone stamp to build up his hair and freshen up the mask. If you want a full tutorial on all of the different tips and tricks for how to use the clone stamp, let me know in the comments below. But in practice, just don't cut off the top of your head when you're taking a photo for your thumbnails. Okay, we're done. The other thing that I'm not gonna cover completely in this tutorial is a deep dive on skin retouching. This image was low enough resolution, it's not worth the effort, and also that would be an hour long video by itself. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see that video as well. What we are going to do is we're going to make some minor adjustments that will make his skin look a lot more natural and a lot less distracting to the viewer. The first is by pulling out the reds. Most skin tones are actually quite orange, and so we wanna match that expectation. The other thing is the purples around his eyes are really distracting, especially once we move the other reds to be more orange. So we're gonna pull those closer to a dark red so that they fit in a little bit better. Now that we have all of the distractions taken out, we can start working on the final composition. So let's pull in all the other pieces of the puzzle. The next piece of the puzzle is actually already in our document, it's the present. What we're going to do is get it sized down to approximately where we want it, and we're gonna cut off the top to make it look like an open box. To remove the background, we can use the same trick as before. Come up here to select subject and mask. You'll notice there's a few spots again, so we're just gonna grab a white paintbrush and fill in the gaps and a black paintbrush to cut out the edges. Now with the present isolated, I can now hold the shift key and draw a straight line across the top to cut off the top of the box. I want to cut it just below the shadow. It looks a little weird to have the shadow layer sticking out. And then to keep the depth, I need to bring back the ribbons. This is as simple as using a white brush to bring back the general shape of the ribbons. And then using the quick selection tool, grabbing the reds, and finally pressing Command Shift I to invert the selection. And then we're free to paint away the mask without affecting the red ribbons on top. And you can see this method gets a really great result. The quick selection tool is one of my favorites because you can hold shift or option to add or remove to the selection and you can cut out edges really easily. We'll use it again in a minute. 
All right, we're on the home stretch. So we're just gonna drop in our Christmas tree background and we're going to apply a Gaussian blur effect. We're going to dial it up enough that it's not distracting from the foreground, but not so much that you can't tell that it's a Christmas tree with some lights on it. At this point, all our high resolution assets are in place. And so now I'm going to bring it all down to our target size all at once, which is 1920 by 1080. The next puzzle piece is a Mr. Beast signature move. He always makes his head just a little bit big in the thumbnails. And the reason why is you want the subject of the video to be really clear and prominent, really big in the thumbnail. So I'm going to duplicate the layer with him. I'm going to merge the mask and we're gonna start cutting out his head with a new mask. And just like I promised, this is where the quick selection tool comes back in handy. We're gonna zoom in on his beard we're gonna make a quick selection. And we can refine it by changing the size of the brush to get finer or broader detail, and then hold Option or Shift to add or remove from the selection. And this lets us really dial in how much of the beard we wanna capture when we're selecting his face. Once we're happy with the selection, it's as simple as pressing Command Shift I and then painting over the mask on the outside of the beard. With that finished, we can unhide the base layer, grab the top layer, and we're gonna grab his head and just make it really big. I mean, unnaturally big. Not so big that it's distracting big, but enough that it pops out more than it would on its own. And you can see something like this actually fits the bill pretty well. Since his face is the main subject of the thumbnail, we're gonna implement a couple more tricks to make it really stand out. If we come over here to the color corrections and scroll down to sharpen, we can crank up the radius and drop down the intensity. I found that that works really well for this particular image. Sometimes it's the inverse, you want intensity more than radius. But it makes it so that it's really crisp and in focus, which is useful because we started with a relatively low quality image. Now that I've got everything in context, I'm realizing that I'm really not happy with the color of the skin still. This is common when you're doing these types of projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the red and make it even more orange and even more bright. And I'm gonna bump the contrast even further on his face so that it really pops. Now you might be thinking, great, multiple sets of iteration, you should be done. There's actually one more change that I make at the end after I finish getting the present in position. See, if you remember, one of the most important things in a YouTube thumbnail is having a clear focus, a clear subject. For me, I have two. It's his face and it's the Pixelmator icon. And after I did a lot of editing to make the Pixelmator icon really pop, by putting borders around it, drawing these shapes to make it look like it's part of a Pixelmator document being edited, it draws a ton of attention to the icon and makes it so his face is almost irrelevant. So I wanted to add one more pop of color to make it so that your eye comes back to his face as well. This is a classic digital painting trick. We're gonna start by creating a new layer right above the face layer and changing the blend mode to overlay. Now if I zoom in here, I wanna get a brush that is right about the size of his eye. Once I've got that, I'm going to pick a bright blue color. And this blue is really good because his eyes are naturally blue and because blue contrasts with the orange skin tones. And now with the opacity turned down, I'm just gonna give this a couple clicks until it gives that brightness to the eyes that I'm looking for. You can see there's a spot where it's spilled out into the eyelashes, so I'm just gonna use the eraser tool to clean that up. And we've got a really great pop of color to the eyes, but we're not finished. We're gonna make yet another layer with the blend mode set to overlay. This time though, instead of painting blue, we're gonna paint with a little pop of white. And with a little tiny brush, we're gonna come in here and just give a couple clicks on the natural highlight in his eyes, and it's gonna bring out those eyes really well. So that when you first look at this thumbnail, you look at the Pixelmator icon, and then you're drawn over to the face and the eyes. And with that, we have a finished YouTube thumbnail. If you learned something in this video, go ahead and leave a like on it. Now, the moment that you've been waiting for is that Pixelmator Pro giveaway. If you want to be entered in a chance to win a free copy, it's really simple. All you have to do is leave a comment on this video below. We're going to be going through every single one of them and picking out the best ones. Now what that comment is, is simple. Just let me know what you're going to be doing with that free copy and we're going to do our best to help out those that are going to make the best use of Pixelmator. Alright, 
Thanks, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.